Okay. So, good evening everyone and thank you for being with us for another webinar. I start my introduction as usual by sharing some news with you and I want to remind you of the following dates for organized photo shoots by Patrick Nellas and Antonella Spiteri who manage the European Top Model Agencies. For those interested, on the 13th June, an early morning photo shoot will be held at Jnaina starting at 5.30 a.m. 5.30 in the morning um, with a team beach shoot at, sun, at sunrise, which I am informed should finish by 8 o'clock in the morning. On the 20th of June, there is another photo shoot um, uh, at Gozo meeting early morning in Chircoa with the team being models in street photography, an original team which looks very interesting and <clears throat> original. These photo shoots uh, are all strictly adhered to COVID-19 restrictions and photographers taking part in these shoots need, need to wear masks for the whole shoot at all times. If anyone is interested to attend, you are to message privately both Patrick Nella Spiteri and Antonella Spiteri, they are both on socials and they've got also a page, ETM, Malta <coughs> and Gozo, and they will guide you accordingly. Uh, I want to also announce some equipment for sale. If you wish to purchase some backdrops with wall mounts, complete with wall mounts and studio strobe lights, not including the portable battery. These are operated through uh, electricity. Uh, they are all in very good condition. <coughs> Please contact Mr. Christian Attard on mobile 7941-3539. Christian Attard 7941-3539. And he will be happy to assist you with the asking prices and uh, give you further details regarding this advertised equipment. I will share <coughs> his number again on the chat for those interested to contact Mr. Attard. For any practicing photographer who wishes to delve into the challenging world of photographic competition, there was a webinar held <coughs> by Canon Malta, which cannot be missed. It is still there. We will provide you with the link as well. My colleague and friend Stephen Bohajar, actually our president of the Malta Photographic Society, delivered yesterday an outstanding and very detailed webinar with an academic approach full of valuable material in how one can prepare to be successful in such competitions and what judges look for. Kudos Stephen, your attempts in lifting the art of photography in your current role as leader are surely making an impact. Well done. Stephen and myself were very happy to meet with our guest speaker, Mr. Patrick Hogan, earlier this week. Patrick gave us a short run-through of what he will be talking about, and we are sure this will be a very interesting presentation, which will mainly focus on a technique called compositing, with Patrick being ever so kind to also sharing a few tips about his editing workflows, has given us a brief insight of the before and after versions of his photos. Patrick Hogan is an Irish amateur photographer living in Dublin. Thanks to one of the positive effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, Patrick embraced the opportunity to join the Malta Photographic Society via Zoom in February 2021. Good choice, Patrick. Patrick has always <coughs> been a keen photographer, but it was only in 2014 that he took his hobby to the next level by enrolling in a beginner's photography evening course in the Dublin Camera Club. In 2016 and again in 2020, Patrick won the club much sought after summer competition trophy and had his award-winning photographs displayed at the summer exhibition. In this presentation, Patrick will take you through his thought processes when composing and taking pictures. Applying his artistic skills in digital photography, Patrick will then demonstrate how to produce you know, unique photographs from original shots. He will do this with the aid of before and after examples 
from his repertoire in the journal of architecture, composites, and still life. A couple of thanks, as I usually do. Thank you to Stephen Buhajar for his support and commitment to help me put these webinars. Yosef Mefsud, our technical guru, for streaming our webinars live on the MPS Facebook page. The Malta Photographic Society Executive Committee for their ongoing and constant support and also the Facebook groups for supporting us by promoting our webinars on their pages, namely in Cernay Morder, Azzo Parditoni from Photographia Bein El Habib, Kutayer Alexander from Photography Shots, and De Bono Johan from All Photography. I will now hand over the word to the president of the Malta Photographic Society, Mr. Stephen Buhajar, to share with us some brief news regarding the Malta Photographic Society. Over to you, Stephen. Thanks, Vince. Thanks for your uh, introduction and for your kind words about uh, yesterday's webinar. Good evening, fellow members of the Malta Photographic Society. And thanks, uh, Patrick, for accepting our invitation to give us a talk on your photographic art. Although he's a foreigner and lives in Ireland, Patrick is a member of the society. It is always a pleasure having members from other countries enrolling with us. This year, we had three new foreign photographers who enrolled as new members. Patrick from Ireland, Mina from Finland, and lately, Mr. Robert Beatty from Australia. Thanks for your interest in our society. This is one of the bonuses from meeting remotely as foreigners from the comfort of their homes can join our weekly educational talks and even share their knowledge as Mr. Patrick Hogan will be doing today. Usually Patrick follows us, follows our webinars with a packet of crisps and a soft drink. And today it will be our turn um, to sit, relax and follow your talk. Good luck, mate. <laughs> This Saturday is the closing day for the third stay-at-home competition. My appeal is not to leave it to the last minute, not to get disappointed for not submitting your images to, the, to this last of a series of three online photographic competitions. Because make sure that on that day you will have problems with the internet or encounter other issues with uploading your images. Please, please read the terms and conditions before submitting your entry as we are still receiving inaccuracies in the entry. As I'm showing in the slideshow, write only the title where you need to type the title of the image and rename your images with your name, underscore, and the title of the image as indicated uh, on, on, uh, the, in the terms and conditions. So please be kind, be helpful and uh, do not increase our workload. Thanks a lot, guys. In these past weeks, we did some research to fine tune our judging system and agreed to include this rubrics in the judging process sheet. For those who are not into the educational system, rubrics are multidimensional sets of scoring guidelines that can be used to provide consistency in evaluating students' work. This helps the judges to be consistent and gives the participants a clear idea why the judge gave them that score. This is not an innovative idea, as this is put into practice in various other photographic institutions. We kept it as simple as possible without going into much information and detailed criteria. As a committee, we are doing our best to improve the judging system and be more professional in the approach. One needs to appreciate the time given by fellow prolific photographers to act as judges and to give us their free service and professional assistance, assistance to judge club and national competitions. We don't want to force or put a judge in a straight jacket, but we want to have 
a perspicuous system understandable by the judge and the competitor. Last week, we received an invitation from Ronda Camera Club, which is based in South Wales, asking if we're interested to participate as a club in an online photographic competition. They are holding it via Zoom on Saturday, 13th November, 2021. They invited our society and four other international photographic clubs to take part. Since we want to build bridges with other societies and get new contacts with other photographic institutions, we accepted this invitation. They need four images from different photographers. The subject is open and there are no categories. We will keep you informed after receiving more details from the organizing club. This year is the 30th anniversary, anniversary from the demise of Mr. Charles A. Herbert, who was one of the founder members of the Malta Photographic Society. He was also instrumental in finding the premises for photographic enthusiasts to enjoy sharing and discussing their hobby. Miss Mary Attart, um, a past member of the society, had the pleasure to be mentored by him back in the 1970s and kept in touch with him till the end. Mr. Pa Mr. Herbert had passed on to her his portfolio of prints when his health became weaker and gave her also his darkroom work. Being his anniversary, Ms. Attar decided to have his significant body of works, both in black and white and color, printed in a limited edition book to act as his legacy of his work and in memory of his sterling contribution he gave to our beloved society. Ms. Attar is requesting and appealing to those who have any material, like anecdotes, and photographs, testimonials, or correspondences of Mr. Charles Herbert that uh, you can spare with her to use in her publication. If you want to contact Miss Mary Attard, you have the email address there, samba.mary at gmail.com, or you can contact her on her mobile, which is 9924-0979. If you need or you have any material uh, which you can spare, kindly do so. And now I hand over the floor to Mr. Patrick Hogan to start with his prepared presentation. Good luck, mate. Did you unmute? Share screen. And here we go. Sorry, boys and girls, I'm going <clears> to <throat> shut down and restart again. Here we go, finally. Is that going out, Stephen? Pardon? Are you seeing that on the screen yet? No, you need to go on share screen. I did, hang on. It's important that uh, yeah. your PowerPoint is open. Share screen, okay. And you have to choose it from the... Pardon me and wait one moment. Okay, open. Then share. Share screen. Hmm. Okay. Sorry about this, folks. Things yeah. happen. Things happen when you don't expect them. It's the X Factor, Stephen. <clears throat> um, touche on the packet of crisps, by the way. <laughs> so the first question is, where am I? Um, I'm over in the far west of Europe, a country called Ireland. And basically, it's next stop America. And basically, there's a big load of water in between us. And we, when that evaporates, it turns into cloud. And we get rain. We get lots of cloud. So this is basically, this is the west of Ireland, the country I'm in. This is the Aran Islands over here. And I got to go there. Yeah. The only unfortunate thing at the moment is I'm not getting sound. 
Um, you're okay. You're okay. Uh, we are we are hearing you uh, clear and sharp. Uh, you, you have to unmute yourself, Patrick, because you muted yourself. Okay. Okay. Clear. Okay. Got it. Um, next uh, slide. Um, this is just some scenes of kind of the west of Ireland, the kind of the country I live in and the countryside. Um, as you can see, this is August, uh, the 26th of August, this was taken on. So this is basically our summertime. <laughs> as you can see, it's a pretty wet summer. Um, just some typical scenes around Ireland. This would be a, an old cottage in the countryside. Again, you know, typical of the kind of the west coast of Ireland. Um, markets, uh, farming. This is County Clare, by the way, and County Clare is on the west coast of Ireland, uh, just north of Kerry, and it's uh, particularly made of limestone. So there's basically very little soil, and you can't really grow a lot here in County Clare, and that's one of the downfalls. But we do have a lot of coastline, and we're big into fishing. So this is a friend of mine, uh, Vinnie Bourne, and uh, he's just taking, this is down in Ballyvon, County Clare, and he's just taking some uh, fish off his boat. Um, we've been, uh, we've got a lot of ruins in our country, as in we've been invaded many, many times. So you get a lot of, you know, different invading forces building and then other ones coming and knocking. So you get that. There's a, there's a lot of ruins left around Ireland. And it's good for photography. You know, it's great. Um, this is... Uh, Dungweir Castle in Kinvara in Clare and the Hogan's my, my I don't know great 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 uh, grandparents and um, this is their kind of area and this would have been their castle so this is Dungweir Castle and that's in County Clare it's just give you an idea of the countryside and um, again uh, this was the 1st of August down in Kerry and this is kind of typical it could be any kind of weather, if you know what I mean. <laughs> it's very sunny out at the moment, it's very warm out at the moment, but it could be lashing rain in two hours time because we're so far into the Atlantic. But it is, it's great for photography. Uh, it's just some more ruins around. And then when we do get sun, we all hit the beach and it is a beautiful country when it's sunshine and it's very green. And uh, this was taken in County Kerry, by the way. Which is, uh, I think Vince uh, visited County Kerry at one stage. Yes. Hey, Vince. Um, here, here's an example of um, the kind of the mountainside in County Clare. You can see it, there's no um, there's no soil, there's nothing growing up here, and it's only over hundreds of years that kind of you know dust and debris has blown in over the county. And uh, but I mean, if you, if you put a shovel in that ground, you only go down about three, maybe four or five inches, <laughs> and it's pure rock, you know, so you wouldn't be growing carrots or anything like that down around there. And again, it's beautiful countryside, if, you know, in rain and in sunshine. Um, this is Ballybunion in Kerry. So it'd be nice to go fishing out there. And then in 2014, uh, my wife, during the summer, said to me, um, you need to get a hobby. And I kind of looked there and said, am I getting old or something? So I didn't know what. But anyway, these um, uh, flyers, you know, during the, the, the end of uh, summer and uh, winter comes in, colleges start doing night courses and things. Anyway, these um, uh, flyers and little brochures started landing in the kitchen counter. And I kind of got the, a severe hint that, God, I think my wife wants me to do something. You know, must be, definitely must be getting old. So, I started thinking about it and I started thinking, uh, what could I do and how far could I walk, you know, you know. So I kind of thought, well, photography, I can sit at a kitchen counter and, you know, do photography. I can, you know, photograph still life. I could make up scenes. Um, I, I drive around, I'm a painter and decorator. So I could be, you know, different parts of the city into the countryside, you know, so. I decided I'll take up photography properly. And I joined a Dublin Camera Club, which is about three kilometers uh, away from my house. So I could, you know, walk there and walk back in the evening. 
and uh, I did. So I decided uh, October, uh, no September, uh, to do the the ten week course. Um, it's not no fee. It's one hundred and twenty euro. So for ten weeks, we learned uh, about you know aperture and speed. We learned about you know focal distance, uh, uh, printing in the dark room, and so on. And one thing I found was I had no clue what aperture was. You know, I've I've been using a camera for years, but uh, you know, like if we went to a wedding or a, a birthday party, I'd always bring a camera and take pictures. But I'd always put it on, you know, green or red, wherever the setting on the camera was, and it was always guaranteed to take a picture. So they started teaching about aperture, you know, and small hole and big hole, and oh, lost me forever. But anyway, uh, the ten week course was over at uh, Christmas. And then the first week of, I, my wife was amazed that I loved it. And I was meeting people and talking to people and she loved that idea and encouraged me to go with it and keep at it. So the first uh, Tuesday of January, I went down and enrolled as a full-time member in it. And of course, I sat down in the back, you know, I always made sure I sat down in the back and I'd sit up against the wall in case somebody, you know, came and talked to me and asked me a question. That's how, you know, introverted I was, if you like. But uh, one thing back then was I discovered I needed to buy a DLSR camera, you know, a proper one with aperture and all that on it. So I bought myself a Canon 40D, uh, which was a crop sensor camera. And I learned, you know, experimented with it. But it, it, the thing about joining a camera club and doing all that at the same time is you need a camera, a DLSR, you need a computer, then you need a computer program. Uh, what else do you need? Oh, you might need a printer, but that came later. But one of the, the things, I, I've never worked with a computer in my life, um, apart from maybe back when I was 18, 19, I was into amateur radio and I had a, a Sinclair Spectrum uh, computer to, to decode Morse code, you know, that kind of thing. That, that was simple stuff. But from basically from the age of 20 up to 54, I never used a computer ever, never had one, never had time for one. So I had to learn how to use a computer, learn how to use a camera, learn how to use, I bought a, a Photoshop Elements, which is a one-off program that you purchase for about 125 euro. It's got, um, it's got a, what do you call it? Uh, layer masks. It's, it's pretty good stuff in it. And I used that for about maybe five years uh, before uh, updating into, this present one, which is Photoshop 21. But back then, I had to learn all those three things, the camera, the computer, and the, the Photoshop. Plus, I was dyslexic. So, and three, and another thing, they don't come with instruction books, these computers and things. So you can't flick and read. So I had to learn, uh, well, a fellow who was sitting beside me and I became friends with him, started telling me about, uh, you know, Google and start telling me about uh, the YouTube channel and things. So I, I started into it. So 2015, 2016 was hell for me because I didn't know whether it was coming or going. I was trying to learn one thing against the other thing and it, it was a disaster. But I, I muddled my way through it. And uh, our camera club in 2017 became a FIAC recognized uh, art gallery. Um, this is, I believe, Ricardo Busi. This is Paul Stanley, our president. And this gentleman over here, which I never remember his name, he's, a, he's from Austria. He's a, also a FIAP, uh, he's on the FIAP board, uh, FIAP board of membership, whatever. But uh, we became a, a FIAP recognized uh, gallery and camera club. And Paul is actually a, a FIAP liaison officer. So it's handy if you're entering clubs and competitions and so on to talk to him. He's a mine of information and they put you right. So. I, I kind of progressed along and took pictures and entered competitions and basically uh, learned how to use a camera. So my wife went to, uh, 2017, my wife went to uh, uh, Bern in Switzerland. She had to go on a, a three day course and it might sound exotic, but it was actually a terrible place, a terrible, I won't say terrible place. It was a, a, an industrial estate and it was a hotel and it was a three-day conference in an actual, um, in, you know, a, a warehouse building. So it wasn't all that glamorous you might think it was. Uh, 
But um, she didn't particularly like it. And I was bored, really bored on my own. I thought it'd be great because uh, I'm not a great uh, television person, you know, for watching or anything. But uh, I decided one evening, just I'd never done a composite before in my life. Um, I kind of understand it because I'm dyslexic and I understand things kind of different than people think, you know, it's, things come easier to me than other people and then simple things come difficult to me. So it's, it's kind of a weird way. But uh, I, I decided to get out a camera and put it on a tripod or, uh, and basically take a base picture of the room. So in other words, exposed for the room and then got a whole lot of clothes, brought them downstairs, set up a, a table with peanuts, crisps and a bottle of beer. <laughs> and uh, basically, this is the first one, this guy here sitting. Um, I basically sat the 10 second timer, press the, the timer, get into position, sit and look. So basically I'm looking at him. So the next photograph I go in, put on the jacket, hold a beer and talk to the couch. And then the next photograph, sit in the couch and look back at him. This guy is taking pictures in the room. This guy is talking to him. Rocker on the piano there is just lashing out music. And uh, a new arrival uh, has joined the party. So this is a, and then at the end, it only took about an hour and a half, maybe just to do it all and set it all up. And it took literally about 30 minutes to uh, create the picture. And that's it there in the laptop. That is my first laptop, still have it. And I entered that into a summer competition uh, in 2017. But at that particular time, composites weren't, um, they weren't really liked. Uh, a lot of people don't like composites. You, you know, it's trickery. Um, you're fooling kind of people, you know, by putting things into scenes and that. But uh, one particular judge, Joe Dial from the North Side, um, he just thought it was really clever and, and he, he liked it. And he awarded me the, the winning uh, uh, trophies that year. And then it went, I also, I also won the best overall picture with this. So that won more stuff. And then it ended up getting printed on a magazine because it was just something different that up to then maybe people didn't uh, enter because it wasn't particularly liked or frowned on. So I decided I like it. So basically, I, want, uh, I understand Stephen and uh, Vince. Um, I'm a bit late home today and I did intend to do a, like a small, uh, what do you call it, program, in a, a small few photographs in Photoshop and just show you how you use a layer mask and brush through. That didn't happen, I'm really sorry. But I picked up some other uh, photographs from my niece's uh, birthday. And this is, this is basically just a setup in my kitchen, right? There's a pair of patio doors with the sun beaming in on top of me when I took this photo. And this photograph is, is it's just a mobile phone shot, but it, it's basically, it's a camera on a tripod, um, it's a 70D, and the reason why I'm using my 70D and not the 5D, is this one has a pop-up screen and I can tilt it and I don't have to keep bending down and looking. So basically my niece, uh, who was 11, well, she was 10, but going on 11, wanted a party scene just like I created for her birthday. So, Friday night she came and she stayed over Friday night and then Sunday morning, we, or Saturday morning, we had uh, breakfast and then we went and fed the ducks and the swans and we came back and my wife set the table and I had the, the camera there is on the tripod and basically this is the base shot. I have the curtain shut behind me and she, the idea was basically that she, re she reads a lot of books and if you give her a like a, uh, what do you call it? like a gift voucher for bookstore. She will literally love you, she'll hug you because she genuinely loves books. But uh, the idea of the shot was uh, books uh, fuel her imagination, you know, that kind of scene. And But she had loads of ideas on what she wanted and she wanted this and she wanted to do that. But because I'm the, the person behind the camera, I need to work out the scene, if you like. I don't want overlapping, you know, you have to go and go in the sequence around the table. So that's that shot. So this is kind of the second shot. Um, again, she gets up, she changes, she gets dressed and rearranges. So I'm basically working around the table. And she's basically playing cards there. There will be somebody else there who will play cards with her. 
So I'm kind of working it out of my head. And uh, so this is another one. Um, she's basically, I'm, I, I have this idea that the person who's going to be sitting in this seat is going to be doing a selfie, you know, take a picture of herself. So I wanted her to take a selfie of the selfie person, if you like. And we did this throughout the whole table and we made this. And again, this is where you need to think and work out what you're doing. If you're going to do a composite like this, you know, you, you, need, you need not overlapping. You don't want hands kind of going over each other. You want them kind of semi, you know, okay, over here, but you know, you kind of semi distance you want them. And this is really, that really only takes about 15, 20 minutes. Well, I'll say 15. I'll say about 30, 35 minutes just to blend all the photographs together, put a layer mask on them, brush in the next one. Because you've done your base shot, uh, the room, you've already got your room. So you're basically just brushing carefully around this person. The table hasn't moved, so you can just brush real quick here and all around it. Same here. You can brush this person in real easy. And you can kind of add your bits and pieces then, you know, some photographs up here. That was taken on the Saturday morning, that photograph. And that was taken on the Saturday morning as well. So you can add little bits. She's big into, you know, Harry Potter and things like that. And she's does ballerina, she does ballet. So I just added a few little bits that I had. Um, I think it was the, the Russian ballet troupe or something. They were down the Pine Depot in Dublin and I took photographs. So that's basically the, the scene and how I go about making a composite, if you like. And uh, that's a few more little photographs we took. Uh, this is why I wanted uh, kind of headshots because I wanted to put them into uh, different photographs that were on the wall of the kitchen. And anyway, 2017, I also uh, decided to get into uh, monochrome uh, photographs. So there's this chap uh, coming over from America, uh, Santa Fe, and he was doing a workshop in uh, Ireland. And I was, because he, he's Ansel Adams' uh, assistant, uh, uh, yeah. Alan Ross, Alan Ross, sorry. And uh, it's a big deal. He's a, he's a big deal of a man, you know. He tours the world doing uh, workshops and that. But uh, it was expensive. And uh, my wife, uh, unknowns to me, uh, presented me with a, an email, a uh, printed out email. And uh, it was basically a gift of a four-day workshop with Alan Ross. So I went off. I was chuffed, couldn't believe it. And uh, I basically uh, wanted to learn uh, about uh, the zone system, um, the difference uh, in digital. I've, I used to uh, take photographs and so on in uh, film, but I've now kind of learned when I joined the camera club in digital. So I needed, to, I'm, I'm blown out, I'm blown out of highlights all over the place. So I don't understand what's, what's needed to do. So a, a four day course with this man and I basically learned how to create monochrome images uh, and the pitfalls of uh, taking uh, photographs. So I really enjoyed his presence. And um, this is him. So, and this is, I did have a right? Yeah. This over here, this, this square over here, um, Ansel Adams uh, uh, came up with this idea that he would use a, like a mount from a photograph, you know, like a, the mount uh, inside a photograph frame. And you can make them different sizes now. And it, it helps you take pictures um, by taking out the confusion. You know, if you if you look at a scene, our eyes are like they, they reckon that our eyes are close to 50 millimeters in, you know, we see in 50 millimeters. And it, it takes in a lot of information. But if you can compress that down and make it narrow and small and move around, you can actually find a good photograph in all that confusion. So that's another thing I learned. I might show it might pop up later. So this is myself. And if I may say so, there's no blown out highlights. It's so nice. Oh, let's see myself for me. Now this is a, sh a shot taken in um uh where is this now? This is the Hungarian Parliament. Um it was our last day, and I want to go down and take a, a picture, you know, for prosperity of this uh building. It's a beautiful building, and it's very Half eleven, I left the hotel, 
we were packing up that day and I went down, tripod and some filters, and this is a base shot. So basically I'm, I'm in aperture priority. I'm taking a, a photograph that is, you're watching the exposure up here. Again, it's midday, you're not supposed to take, well, you shouldn't, unless you want big, um, what do you call it, shadows. But uh, daytime, midday is not a good time to take photographs, they say. So I'm, I'm using aperture and up around, what, F8, that's about 500 of a second. So that gives me a reading then that I can use with my Lee uh, app, uh, Lee filter app. And I can basically then take a reading and that'll give me uh, how many seconds uh, photograph that I need. So, so this is my long exposure photograph. And it, it's nice enough, but I wouldn't hang it on a wall. I'm, I'm, you know, a lot of pe people would maybe hang this on the wall or take this photograph, but I wonder would I hang it or hang it on the wall? And um, to me, I like, I like quietness. I like non-distractions kind of thing. That's my particular type of photography. So again, I, this red flag, <laughs> that is a red flag, literally. Um, you wouldn't leave that in. Um, and that crane over there, I wouldn't leave in. So I, I know by, by looking, I'm going to take that out, I'm going to crop in a bit here, and I'm going to make it a 16 by 9. That is a distraction there, and there's a dust bunny there. So this is what I create. And basically, to me, this is a much calmer type of a photograph. Um, I, I have printed it, I printed it on the uh, A3 Plus, and it's, it's downstairs. Uh, but this is what I like. I like quietness. I like, you might think I'm very strange, but I like dark. I like dark. Go and just bring it all down. So this is the Hungarian Parliament. And I'll go back. No, okay. This is a shot I took in the uh, north side of Dublin. It's called the Casino. And basically it was a holiday home for a, an English Earl. Uh, when he came to Dublin, he would stay here and, you know, go to Parliament and so on and so forth. But um, nobody's ever managed to get a, kind of a decent picture of it. It's kind of a, it's, it's, it's stubby. It's not a great big kind of a building, you know, it's a bit... A bit <laughs> if you know what I mean, I wouldn't mind owning it, but it's a bit small. And um, there is 16 rooms in it, and they're mostly down in the basement in the ground. And he basically wanted a living room, reception room upstairs that he could see the four uh, four views out his window. In other words, he could see the mountains, he could see the sea, he could see the countryside, and he could see the city. So that's basically what he wanted, and he he kind of lived down below. So. I took, I, I went up and I had an idea for the, to take it, but it didn't really work. So I went back up and I re-photographed it on the advice of somebody else who said, maybe you just went in the right frame of mind. You didn't, you know, you need to go and look again and try and create something or look for something in it. So I went and created this uh, photograph and I, I thought it was nice enough, but uh, there's a kind of a, uh, Vince uh, alluded uh, yesterday to a, an X factor. An X factor is when something goes drastically wrong and something went drastically wrong with this photograph for me. Um, I was, does, we, we have uh, competitions in our club. We have a summer competition and we have a winter competition. And our winter competition lasts 13 weeks. So each week you, you, you uh, take in photographs and you know, in color or monochrome or both or digital. Okay, so I was doing monochrome and I was winning. And on the 12th week, I, I basically won. I knew I'd won it. it. You know, no matter what I entered next week, um, no matter what kind of a, a, a mark, I knew I'd get a good mark, you know, a reasonable mark. And our club uh, has from uh, one to 50, some clubs have one to 20. But our club was one to fifty, and I was doing damn good. So I went in on the thirteenth week. Oh God, thirteenth <laughs> says it all. But then um, I entered this photograph, and I, you know, when, when the judge, you know, has got sixty or seventy photographs, as you get down towards the end, and if your photograph is not uh, chosen yet, 
you kind of know that you're getting, you're going to be near the winner because, you know, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So two photographs were left and I knew I'd won it. And he picked up this photograph. He put it up in the podium. It was a print, I have a print. And he left it there for about five seconds, picked it up off the podium, threw it on the floor, kicked it up the middle of the room and said, this, the owner of this uh, image is disqualified. And then he picked up the next one and he gave it 50 points. So I was red as a balloon. And everybody knew it's Pat's photograph because, you know, I, nobody does this dark stuff and they instantly knew it was me. And as I said, I didn't know what it was. And he talked about the winning photograph then and congratulated and everything else. And you're, you're really not supposed to uh, uh, interfere with a judge in his opinion or whatever. But uh, a woman asked, uh, why, did, why did you disqualify this uh, photograph? It's lovely. And he said, the, the author doesn't know what a, a, a monochrome image is. And I didn't know what he was talking about at that stage still. But uh, she asked to explain, and somebody else asked to explain. And it, it got passed back up. And it was put back on the podium. And you may not see it, but that window is black. Like, it's dark, I should say. But next factor, I put a glow in this window of sepia just in that window just to give it a bit of a nice warmth to it and that was my downfall i didn't know at that stage i knew you can color you can use coffee color but you, you can use sepia you can use psyllium you can use all kinds of uh, uh, treatments to a monochrome image but you have to do the whole image you can't just selectively do it so that was my x factor moment <laughs> And I lost, and I was mighty embarrassed, and I'm still embarrassed about it. So that's the X Factor moment. I learned a valuable lesson. That's that. And again, this is a, a, a church in Sandy Mount, Dublin. It's a Norman, it's built by the Normans, so it's a pretty old church. But it's a beautiful uh, building, it's beautiful detail, and it's in a very affluent, wealthy area of Dublin. And I, I just loved it, but my problem is the cars. And you can say you can move around, move left, move right, which we've all been taught to do. But um, no matter where, the, because there's a bus terminus uh, beside me, a bus station, people come and park all around this church and go into the city. So this is the best photograph I could get of the actual building. So. I knew when I was taking it, I don't like those apartments. I don't like the uh, stop sign, don't like the cars. So I basically took it and you know, darkened it down as such and then just highlighted up you know, the parts of the building that I like. And this did a pretty good, uh, I got some pretty good uh, uh, reviews on this particular photograph. And I continue today to use this kind of technique to make uh, darkened photographs. And we had, I was lucky to go to Holland and I went to Amsterdam and I knew this building was here called the Eye and it's basically the Film Institute of Holland and it's a, it's a busy area and there's lots of people come in and see it and walk around it and all that but my wife took this mobile phone shot of me taking a picture of it, a long exposure photograph of it and basically because she said I was so animated in setting up and so excited and she didn't know what, I mean, to her, it's, uh, it's a horrible building. She doesn't like uh, modern architecture. But uh, I, I couldn't wait to take this photograph. But well, don't look at me now. But on the, basically on the camera, uh, in fact, when I do a long exposure, I cover up the, uh, the viewfinder just to stop any light getting in. Really simple technique, a uh, 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 switch just to keep it exposed. Um, 16 filter, uh, leaf filter, 16 uh, stops. Um, some people, like this person, that person, they'll be blurred out over long exposure. Um, these people sitting, they won't, they might get blurred, some up here, but these will all disappear. So I know that. So I, I basically, I will get the building that I want. And this is the building, and this is the kind of technique that I want or the process that I want to use on it. Again, I just like yeah, the dark side, if you like. 
um, and creepy like that. But this is the kind of photography I like. I like to, you know, just highlight what I want to see or want the viewer to see or the judge I want to see it. And a lot of people back in 2017 and 18, uh, judges, uh, they would look at something like this straight away and say it's underexposed. And they just didn't know what they were looking at. The very, you know, it was alien to them, if you like. So we have to move that. This is a, a shot taken in Italy. Again, it's a war memorial in Lake Como. Uh, very untypical of the area to have something like this. They're only the more kind of older type of buildings, but this is theirs. And then this is a, a modern um, extension put onto our National Art Gallery. Um, it was built in the 70s and it's kind of a, a brutal kind of a concrete uh, extension and it's big but it, it works because it, it it simplifies everything when you look at it um the old and the new this is the old part of the building and um, this is a seven meter long uh seven meter high uh piece of olive tree and it's it's beautifully carved by a chap down in galway again it's a solid piece I think, I think it's just beautiful, stunning. But um, the floor um, distracts from me, if you like. It's too bright, you know, your eyes travel there. The, the stop sign over here, the exit sign, and some up here. So again, I just want to create a, a kind of a presence to this piece. And I think I like it anyway. Uh, it may not be everybody's taste. I understand that in photography, everybody has different ideas and tastes. But, Again, that, that to me you now makes it, it's calmer and it just highlights the, uh, the actual quality, if you like, of the craftsmanship. Uh, this is a shot taken. This is the, the cube houses in Rotterdam. Um, a lot of people might not like a gradient kind of added to it, but um, the sky is particularly... Um, uh, gray, you know, it's just flat, nothing happening. Um, even if you did, uh, you know, a 10 minute exposure, nothing would move still, we'd just go to mush. So I just put a, a gradient into it. But I still, I, you know, I love the, the way the buildings lean into each other. These are people's houses, by the way, um, maybe for two people max. Um, basically, you have a, a cylindrical uh, pillar coming out of the ground, which is has a door at the bottom, and you go in, you go up a windy stairs, and these uh, tubes are put on top of the cylindrical part, and they have flat, flat floors inside, but leaning walls. It's, it's very strange, but it's a beautiful area, it really is. And this is in Rotterdam. Again, I took my wife and my, well, I asked my wife, would you come along to uh, Rotterdam with me? We were in, again, we were in Holland. Uh, we were staying in The Hague, and I did get into Amsterdam, and I would highly recommend, if you're ever thinking of going to Amsterdam, go to The Hague instead and stay there. It's far cheaper. It's only about 20 minutes on the train into it, and it's a much nicer city, The Hague. But anyway, we went to uh, Rotterdam, and I'm, I'm walking down this uh, left to right. I'm heading towards the Erasmus Bridge and a, a series of buildings down there that I want to photograph. And I, I just love this juxtaposition of the, the old war memorial from 1918 um, and the, the new big modern building. But I knew this chap was coming down. He's uh, from Japan and he's taking a selfie. And I just love that. But what I didn't like was this part. I do, I didn't like this. This thing that you tied the ship up to, didn't like it. Again, falls in the concrete bits and things. So I basically, you know, just cloned them out and calmed down the area and made this particular image. Um, I think it works. Uh, you got this kind of V shape drawn up. So that's the kind of photography I'm in. And there, this is the Erasmus Bridge here. In, there you go. And these buildings, uh, the container buildings, they call them the vertical city. Um, basically, it's three, three and a half million square meters of floor space in these. It, the architect, because Rotterdam is an import uh, uh, port, uh, you've got lots, lots of container ships coming in, everything comes into the port of Rotterdam. Um, they're built on basically the design of containers uh, stacked on top of each other. But you can basically, there's apartments here in, in it, so you can live in it, 
you can work in it. It's got office space, massive office space. Um, it's, you can do your shopping in it. It's got restaurants in it. It's got a cinema. It's got a gym. It's got underfloor car parking. You, you would live in there and never come out. It's so big. But uh, I knew I knew I'd get a photograph of this. By the way, when I went down to the Erasmus Bridge, I couldn't actually get a photograph of it. There was nothing that you couldn't get anywhere that was always clutter in the way of it. So the, the only real way you can take a, a photograph of this particular bridge is way down to the left um, where you need a telephone lens shooting back up and you can basically get it there. But you could, I knew uh, this I would take out, just clone it out and basically keep everything in. And I created this uh, image. Okay, it's, it's nothing to write home about, but at least it, it's you know, slightly better than that, you know. So, again, as I say, there's nothing, you, you need to be away from this bridge to take a photograph of it. And this is the uh, the vertical city. Um, my wife was absolutely bored out of a tree and wanted to go home. So, um, the only advantage uh, point I could get was down on the, the, the river edge, if you like, uh, on the bridge. The bridge the, uh, it has a, a, a tram going down the middle. It has two lanes of traffic coming up and two lanes of traffic going down. So it bounces and it's, it, you know, you'd be, you'd be up at like 1200 trying to take a, a photograph of it or, you know, to get the thing to, to be sharp enough. Um, so I went down onto this uh, level and took a, a tripod and a long exposure shot of it. And it, oh, sorry, I will just few things about as soon as you lift I, i'm using a 24 to 70 lens and once your, your camera is horizontal perfect it you know your picture will be okay but once you start rising it up as, as a lot of you everyone knows as a lot of you know as you start rising it up buildings start tilting over at you um and you've got to watch out for that so i knew these when i kind of pull this building up um I, I had enough headroom up here, if you like, you know, because as you pull the building up, it starts getting kind of taller on you, if you like. It's kind of an illusion if, as well. But I, I know there's, you can get a tilt shift lens for this kind of stuff. And my, my thing is, by the time you set up a tripod, put a camera on it, put a tilt shift lens on it, sometimes um, things move, you know, within the image that you don't want. So... I like to, you know, the inclusion of, you know, like a boat or something or a person. And so I don't learn, I don't use the tilt shift lens uh, really because they're too expensive. And at this stage, I know how to pull build buildings up straight enough and level them back out, you know, to get a, to get a decent picture. So this is the, the vertical city and this is my kind of idea of what I want it to look like. Again, using a, a kind of a darkening technique to it. Um, again, just barely clipped it in there. Uh, nothing over here that's gone out of that building. And same here. So that's what I was up to. And then this is another shot. Uh, again, this is uh, The Hague. And basically, I mean, th these buildings here, they, they're five story high. So you can imagine how high this is. So I, I just waited around and I wanted people, there was lots of people going left and right up here across on me, but there's very few people coming down. And I, I, I just waited and waited to see if somebody come down. And eventually these two lads, it was about 20, it was 6.40. So it was 20 to 7 in the evening. And these two lads came down, uh, obviously finished work. They had their suitcases with their briefcases. So I was kind of happy there. And I created this shot. Again, you, you know, camera distortion, you've got to watch You've got enough room when you're taking a shot. I mean, this is full. This is uh, uh, my Samsung camera, which is 18 mil um, taken with. So I've got the two lads bright enough and just kind of created a shard of light coming down at them. Just to, to emphasize, you know, that the human element is in, in this big, you know, concrete jungle. Uh, that's basically my shot there. And then I went to Paris. Um, I tried to get a, a shot of this building, the Grand Arch, but they were setting up a Christmas market and there was cranes and trucks all around it and porta cabins and all kinds of things. But uh, 
I just seen this lady leaning up against the railings, um, this kind of teepee that was kind of leaning in a juxtaposition, if you like, and kind of mirrors it. So I just took this picture. And again, that is me in there, in the bubble, and here. And while I was standing taking a picture of that girl, I noticed there was five soldiers coming out of this building. This is called uh, Defence. It's in uh, in Paris. And it, it's, a, it's, it's an area, it's the most expensive real estate in Europe. Um, everybody, you know, the big giants of incorporation are here. And uh, it's very well protected and security is very tight. But I noticed these uh, soldiers coming out of the building. There's five of them. And three of them went over to the left, and two of them came down and walked kind of in this light. And I framed up and I got the shot. And just as they were here, perfect, just hit the, the button, took the shot. And within a split second, I got a tap on the shoulder and I looked around. There was three soldiers behind me. Now, they, did, they had rifles and all, but they weren't pointing at me or anything like that. But they just wanted to know, what, what am I doing? Um, like a, I have a big backpack, I have a, a thing sticking out, which is my tripod, and the camera there, obviously somebody's watching, and because I'm kind of going around the area and getting up on bits of walls, get height and have a look and get perspective, I was acting uh, a bit strange, if you like. So I decided to calm down, and they, they, they understood once they seen my camera equipment and my driving license, and I was a tourist, they were... Kind of okay about it, but no climbing walls for sure. No climbing walls. And then just as yep, just as that light is coming through the buildings, um, I noticed a, a lady standing in the light, and I just moved around and I kind of wanted to get her vertical along here. So I, she looked at me and I looked at her and she kind of waved at me and I waved at her and I kind of pointed to the building that I was taking this building, not her. But uh, she just stood there, didn't bother. Um, and it's, uh, again, it's, uh, I think it's 24 mil I'm on. Um, very close to the top. It's very hard to fit all the, the building in because as I pull this building up, I know I'm going to be tight up here. So I created this image. And again, I just made it in there, clipped it in. But she's she's bang on centre with the thing and then the light coming through. So I didn't win anything with this, but uh, I, I really like it because, I mean, the amount of floors that are in this building, I haven't counted, to be honest with you, but that's a lot of, that's a big building. And then the human element, which is close enough to the camera that she's big enough in the frame. And then this, uh, years ago, um, there was a movie called The Day of the Triffids. And um, it scared me little jeepers out of me. But uh, I, I, I we had black and white television back then. We didn't have colour. But uh, it was basically a lot of lads going around with sticks with sunflowers stuck on them and they'd wave them in the sky and the camera would point towards the sky. I find a little daylight out of me, as I say. But um, this uh, street art, the, the lights, the street lights, um, they just reminded me of uh, the Triffids, and I just thought I'd take a picture of this. But one thing, uh, people read from left to right. So, you know, your, your eye is kind of thrown over here all the time, whereas I want, you know, your eye to rest on this. So I knew I'd flip it, flip it over. Um, but the thing you've got to watch when you're flipping over is the writing. The writing is going to be reversed if you flip it over there. So I flipped it and basically brought in uh, the existing photograph on a different layer and used a layer mask and just brushed in the name back in, in as it's supposed to be. So to me, you've got a kind of a leading line in now with the, the rope uh, leading in and uh, the Triffid kind of traffic light or street light. So that's a little experiment by me. And then this is kind of my favorite photograph that I took again. And um, it's just the different textures. It's the wooden texture, it's the uh, resin, it's the stainless steel, it's the kind of tarmac. And it's, it's just the different textures that are in the photograph. And of course the buildings in the back. So 
to me, I just like this, and it, it's minimalist. It's, there's nobody in it. In your eyes, you're just drawn in, in you know, towards the centre there. These lovely, lovely shades all around it, in my opinion. And this is the, the central bank. And the reason why I'm putting this in <clears throat> Dublin City Council, um, you know, the, the, the city uh, organizers, if you like, um, they never think when they're doing silly things that people might want to look or might want to photograph a building. So I don't know if you can see it, but yeah. Okay, you've got, you've got a security guard there. But there's pillars, uh, horrible pillars uh, as a cycle lane. And then you've got a big lump of concrete here and a traffic light hanging out of it at a, a jaunty angle. And it's terrible. You know, if you're going to take a photograph, so basically this is our central bank in Dublin City and it looks after the finances of the country. Um, just have a quick glass of water. And this is a, a shot taken in The Hague, uh, the criminal uh, Eurojust. Um, my wife had a, a two-day kind of conference over there, so I went over with her, and I just took, I just took that photograph for prosperity. And then this is called Looking Up. And this is uh, Hamburg in 2018, February. I asked my wife, could I go to Hamburg and do photography? And it was the first time I ever left a uh, holiday kind of without her, if you like. And she said, by all means, I'm fed up walking around with you and all you're doing is looking up and taking pictures and things. So she, I went to Hamburg for four days, three nights, four days. Um, it was the cheapest holiday I've ever been on. It cost me 150 euro for flights and accommodation. Um, I think it was 49 euro uh, for the, the Ryanair return and 29 euro a night for the Airbnb. And the Airbnb was fabulous. Uh, it was a one bedroom apartment, kitchen, lovely bathroom and a big railings outside. So I knew I was going to be leaving at like eight o'clock in the morning, going photographing all day, coming back at eight, nine in the evening and processing a few photographs and adding some of the east. So I went to Hamburg and this is called the Chili House. Uh, it was basically built um, back in 1920, uh, Germany, um, because Germany did uh, export with Chile and set up a, a kind of an export uh, market with Chile. And this is me in uh, the Chile house in the courtyard and basically just framing up. And this is the actual shot that I took. Again, I'll just come back. The sky. I mean, there is literally no sky there. There's nothing. It's just horrible grey. Um, so yeah, you, you know, you have to do something. Um, so I did this. This is a, a. This building is actually twelve stories high, and I'm using a crop sensor camera with a ten to twenty two mil lens, um, because again, my full frame is a twenty four to seventy. So that's basically fifteen mil on a, a full frame camera, if you like. Um, that's looking up, and I can only get three stories in this. But uh, it's a beautiful building, and I just thought it was something original and something different. And this is the actual outside of the Chile house. And this is, again, as I said, it's eight stories high, so it's just a flat wall. <clears throat> At the, the, another courtyard, you have this round, I, think, I, I believe it's a staircase that goes up into the floors. But uh, again, no sky, so gradient. Um, this is the outside again of the chili house. This took uh, 4.8 million bricks to build. And I just like the, the, the sequence, you know, you're looking in, looking down. But what I liked was the curvature of this uh, wall, the way it just leans down and curves back around. So I just created this one. <clears throat> Again, the in, inner courtyard of the uh, Chile House. This is the Spiegel again, and this is the, the German kind of national newspaper uh, building. And this is Dublin. Um, this is a, a NAMA building that looks after the liquidated finance of companies and so on and so forth. And I just like the, uh, 
and the statue climbing up the wall. Yeah. And just getting decluttering the photograph, you know, you don't want all that, you don't want your eye moving around the place, so just falls here. This is a, a shot I took in uh, Madrid, in Spain, uh, St. Peter. Again, just highlighting different things. Uh, this is County Mayo. I uh, just walk and walk along the field. Um, this ram or whatever he is, cow, or ram sheep, I should say. And just sitting there proudly looking over and watching the, the bay and the sea. Uh, this is James Joyce Bridge in Dublin City. Um, this is a photograph of poppies. I took this, uh, this is a mobile phone shop, by the way. And I took this in, um, oh God, 2018. And I entered it into the 2020 um, summer competition. And uh, the judge, she was a lady uh, from Cork, uh, loved it and awarded me the winning photograph for 2020. And then she was asked to pick the overall picture that she liked best, if you like. And she picked this again, so I've got two trophies out of it. Um, this is my 60th birthday, uh, 17th March uh, 1961 I was born, and I knew I wasn't going to have people over to the house. And I decided to create something that I could remember my 60th with. So basically I took all the furniture out of my kitchen, I got three pieces of three lengths of wood, and I marked them out uh, 15 inches apart. And so I fitted seven, seven people, seven statue pictures of me in a row and eight deep. So I took 56 photographs, 56, yeah, 56 uh, photographs of myself all lined up in different positions in this room and then composited them together. And then I added these three, which would make it 59. And then where is the 60th? Well, he's pressing the button on the camera. He's the camera operator. So there's 60 pats in the room, basically. And that's my uh, my uh, birthday. I printed this, it came out very well. This is another shot. Again, uh, street art. You know, they're, they're lovely, these uh, street art lights. I like it. This is a uh, Hamburg again. And the, the, the lady policewoman, I was finished for the day. And as I was finished, I'm walking away from this building. I know she was walking up. So I just, you know, readjusted the camera and turned it back and went, turned it right back on her. So it wasn't making it obvious. And I waited for her just to walk into the scene and just turned around, recomposed the shot and took a shot at this in the building. Uh, I believe this is a courthouse, the Supreme Court. Uh, it's in Madrid. It's, uh, what do you call this? Uh, Madrid, yeah, Madrid, Spain. It's a um, courthouse. But I, I just love the way the, the building curves. It's a round kind of a building. And I just love the curvature on it. So kind of highlighted and emphasized the, the light segment. Again, uh, one Sunday morning, um, my wife got up to go to the loop and came in and shook me and said, it's really foggy outside. Do you want to get up? And I put my head back down. I said, no. And then it's just decided, I better get up. You know, because fog can create some amazing photographs. And uh, I got up and I went out walking and around. And this is a college right next door to me. And there's a lake in it, a rugby, rugby field. Rugby fields, I should say. Um, but there seemed to be a, a, a parents' teacher meeting or something going on. And there was a lot of uh, people all dressed up and so on. And uh, I just noticed this woman, I, I don't know if she was watching for ducks or whatever, but she was just standing there. And I just thought, fire a shot real quick. And as soon as I uh, fired a shot and looked at the back of the screen to make sure it was okay, and I looked back up, she moved. So there wasn't a chance of getting another one. But I was really happy with that. And again, um, the this, this same morning, mist everywhere. But uh, I noticed a jogger coming along. And I 
wonder mm, what I do here. So I basically just put the camera down at my waist level. And as he ran through the first shot, I just pressed the button. And as soon as the, the camera kind of, you know, reacted, I pressed it again and pressed it again and pressed it again and pressed it again and pressed it again. And there two, four, six, eight, ten. So ten photographs, all perfectly held still and just blended all the different uh, runners, the same guy, into the shot. And this is a shot. This is Dublin Leary. Um, this is Dublin Bay. This is a, these two chimneys here would have been our electricity generating station. Oil um, would have been born from there, not anymore. It, this is now an incinerator. And you might think that's kind of bad stuff that's been born out. Uh, that's pure uh, steam. And um, there's so much filtration going on in that thing. But uh, no, no, it's no pollutant, basically, it doesn't pollute. But uh, uh, this is Dublin Bay, as I say, Sandy Mount, and I pulled in to for a cup of tea and a sandwich. And I got out of the van and walked over and sat on the, the wall um, here. And again, I'm always carrying a camera. So I was just sitting there watching, and I just decided I'll take a picture here. So I then... Um, Defocus the camera. I, does the Fuji uh, camera has different, um, uh, what do you call it, like a, emulsions or something? You know, for different the different Fuji film that they they make. So you can you can select Velvia and you know other types of uh, film, but uh, this one gave off a kind of a blue hue to it. So I basically just don't undo the autofocus and just went to the manual focus, but backed it off slightly, blurred. And, uh, you know, anyone coming in with a kind of prominent red or, you know, grandparents with the child, I'd, you know, just take a picture, you know. So I made a little collage of uh, kind of defocused uh, photographs. Um, this is a, a new library in Dunleary. Um, again, I just put the, the height of it, long exposure shot. And that's the uh, my version of a long exposure monochrome. Okay, so that is that. So I'm going to go back out of that. And back out of that. And I'm going into flowers. You can still hear me okay, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Sir. Thanks very much, Steve. Just for confirming. And I'm going photos. Okay, so uh, lockdown. Um, basically, the only things open uh, during in our country, anyway, was food stores and kind of essentials. Um, things like hardware shops weren't open, uh, clothes shops weren't open, hairdressers, barbers, not open. Uh, takeaway food was open and supermarkets. But uh, I did notice when I was in the supermarket one day some uh, uh, acrylic paints, water based acrylic paints. And <clears throat> it was like a godsend, you know, because you could do something with acrylic paint. So I had some uh, mount board, damaged mount board. I think it was uh, about four feet by three feet or something like that. But it was damaged. And I decided I'd buy four bottles. So I bought a, a green, a blue, a yellow, and a red, and brought them home and cut up these uh, boards into like 11 inch squares. And basically, got an L rag and put a a blob of one colour on, a blob of another colour on, and rub it real vigorously just to give me a, a texture, if you like. And then I, I get another colour and kind of rub it all just around the edges just to make a, a frame, like a vignette. Um, but they, when you, you wet paper, of course, it curls up. So you have to flatten it down. So that evening, I, I just got those pieces of cardboard and it was our wedding anniversary the week previous. And my wife was throwing out the uh, flowers and she asked me, do I want them? So I said, absolutely. So I just, that night started to experiment with layouts and things. So then, yeah, I could see, I could see me making something out of this. So I basically, um, this is me, this is the, uh, the boards. And basically I just got a, a camera and a tripod. And I decided that I, rather than use any Photoshop whatsoever, um, I'd create the, the photograph kind of in camera, if you like. And this is basically what I'm doing. And 
Please zoom in. You can see I'm placing bits of tread on the, on the, the board, uh, flower we say, lighting it and then darkening down the, uh, the aperture and bringing up the speed to we say 300 and just making the photograph dark. And with the use of lights, then just creating a center point of focus. <laughs> That's me again. And as you can see, I'm you know, not good at dressing up. <laughs> so this, this is a few of the examples. I'll just go through them quickly. Now, you know, some of them, they're not great, but you can see the idea, you know, a bit of white thread, a bit of gray thread, a bit of black thread, just to add a, a kind of a texture. And different variations. And then I basically created a, a virtual room. You know, you know, if you did go and hang them, hang them up or print them or whatever, you know, you'd get this kind of thing. And again, it's, you know, <laughs> during the lockdown, you're not going anywhere. You can't go to work. Um, you've been shopping, you've done that. And, you know, it's pretty bad weather outside and that. So it, you, you can basically just while away the hours and you can do anything creative. You, you don't have to use flowers. You could use, you know, jewelry or pottery or certain things and just create your own kind of um, your own art, if you like. So that's that one. Then where we go, we go, let me see a sequence. A few more. So again, uh, fruit, I uh, was down in the supermarket and I basically just bought some bits and pieces of uh, fruit. This is pomegranate, pomegranate if you like, um, some Seville oranges, uh, some peppers, I think I, I won't talk about that, <laughs> and some, some uh, figs. And onions, red onions, well, being more nice than red onions. But uh, you ever try to get a red onion to stand up? It won't. So I'm using kind of a nut underneath with the intention of, you know, cloning it out later. So, I mean, you could, you could cut the onion there, but I wasn't ready to eat onion. So basically, again, creating a, a like a virtual gallery, what it would look like if they were hanging up. Um, again, I, I put a texture on it. Um, the texture was a photograph of the uh, the hedgerow at the side of my house. Um, it was done in, in winter. And, you know, it's, there's no leaves on the trees. So all you're seeing is just the branches and such, such. But, you know, it just gives you an idea that, you know, you can create a panel of something out of nothing, you know, just create something. <laughs> My favorites. Oh yeah, some rust. There was a lady in England, and her name was Susan Brown. Uh, is Susan Brown? And she, I, I, as far as I know, she she's the head of the RPS in London, or she's changed to a different category, uh, judging uh, abstract and things. Um, but she's a lovely lady and she came over to our camera club and she was telling us that herself and the husband, she doesn't drive, but she asked her husband, would he drive her to the sea, the seaside? And it's, it's basically an hour and a half to get to the seaside. So the husband agreed and he just dropped her at the, you know, the car park and she got out with the tripod and the camera and Canon kind of 5, 5D she uses. And uh, he stayed in the car and read his book. And she walked over and walked down onto the beach and she was totally disheartened. Uh, there was nothing there. It was just a, a gray sky. There was no big, massive, you know, sea swell or nothing. It was just a, a boring, you know, scene. It wasn't what she expected in her head at all. So she walked around and walked along. She could find nothing to uh, photograph, but she, she uh, was walking back. And again, she was looking on the ground at shells and, taking pictures, but there was nothing really there to gel with her. And as she was walking towards the steps to go up, she noticed these uh, reinforcing steel girders and uh, they were rusted to pieces, you know, and she started kind of looking and tilting her head and she started seeing photographs in it and she showed us a, a triptych that she made and a triptych is three photographs 
you know, belong in a series, if you like, or, or, or gel together, or, you know, a meaning together. And it was the first time I've ever seen a triptych in my life. And it was beautiful, the fact that, you know, the colours in it. So I was up in a, a worker's yard uh, one morning at quarter eight, and the, the welder wasn't in. And I just seen all this old rusty stuff. And I thought, pretty rusty. Get me no mobile phone and I was seeking to find anything. So I went over and I put it on a square format and I started tilting the, the camera, kind of, you know, finding angles and things. And this is a series of rusty photographs that I took. And again, it's, it, you know, it's abstract, it's different. And sometimes, you know, when you do get them on a computer, you can, um, you know, you can flip them, you can horizontally you know, flip them vertically or whatever, you know, but they're basically straight shots. There's no hilly poo done. Rust is rust, if you know what I mean. Oh, there's many of them. These are sheets, um, small, thin sheets of steel uh, stacked up, and they're basically rusted to pieces, but they, they give, give an abstract kind of a look. Again, sheets just lying on top of each other are rusty. But if you zoom in, you get kind of these photographs. So that's another little thing of mine. And then the one I'd like to show you, because it goes back to that. Uh, oh, it goes back to. Uh, um, remember, eight, at the very start, there was a chap with a, like a, a, a photo frame mount around his neck. Um, that kind of idea was Ansel Adams' uh, idea of finding a photograph in a, a scene in front of you. And I was on a, a bridge in um, The Hague in the North Sea, and I was walking back, and underneath me uh, is the beach, basically, you know, so I'm on the, on the, the promenade, if you like, looking down. And I start noticing these, uh, the, tracks, trailer tracks, you know, of uh, tractor, like, you know, for going and emptying the bins and they, they clean the beach, you know, sometimes they drag stuff along to uh, and clean any rubbish up. And I started seeing all these uh, tracks in the, in the sand. So I started, uh, picked up uh, my camera and looked through the viewfinder. And when you look through the viewfinder, if, you know, we're all used to looking at a camera horizontal or taking a, you know, a portrait, but sometimes, you know, if you tilt it at an odd angle, you can basically guess the tracks to line up with where your photograph begins, if you like. And you can get interesting photographs by twist, twisting, twisting the, uh, the lenses. And again, it's just a sequence. I might just put it in slideshow of you. And I'll have a glass of water while that's playing. It is slightly, um, I did uh, desaturate because I didn't want heavy kind of a color. And there's a, a lady in um, England, her name is Irene Fry. <clears throat> and she suffers from uh, arthritis, severe arthritis. So she, she can't walk very much, but she takes photographs from her car and her husband drives her everywhere. And um, she uses white layers on her photographs and it gives us a kind of a, a painterly artistic look. And basically, I defocus, well, not defocus, I desaturated this, and by using a white layer at 50% and then changing the blend mode to like soft light, um, it, it, it kind of gives that kind of a glow, if you like. And it just makes it kind of an arty kind of a look about it. And again, you can see what I'm doing, uh, you know, I'm contorting the, the camera to take photographs where I want them coming in at corners. Whereas if I kept the, the camera horizontal, I wouldn't be able to get them lines to meet up. So it's just a series that I did. Um, quite a lot of people liked them, in fact. But uh, here we are back. That's the North Sea, Holland. So I'm going to come out of that. And so, then, Patrick, that, yes. is, that is sand. That's sand, yeah. Brilliant. Yep. 
That's really? just sand. It's just sand with a like tractor. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, tractor tires uh, walking up. You know the way they, they drive up and uh, empty bins and so on. So you can see all the trails, you know, just going up. And and you desaturated it. I desaturated because the, you know sand, uh, as you know, well, I presume you know when it's wet, it's a dark brown, heavy. So I desaturated it just to give it a kind of a monochrome kind of a look. Yes. But but then I went and added a white layer at a low opacity on top of it. And that reveals the when you go into a soft light or even hard, or what you call it, uh, a screen, um, it, 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 it retains the detail, but just gives that white kind of a look to it. I really like this set, although the others are nice too. They are beautiful. They are outstanding. But Perfect. this this set, uh, when when you're saying that you have taken these uh, images, um, uh, showing sand, but then it's you simple. desaturated it. It's it's simple, magnificent. But well it, done. But it, it's very simple, and sometimes and this know, this square format suits um, uh, the purpose. So. I mean, if these were in a, you know, like a, not a gallery, but if it was in a camera club on the wall, they, they'd have a certain appeal or a certain interest, you know. So there we go. And I know we're getting close to time, which is good. But um, do I have anything else? Been through the flowers, been through frames. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I just been downloaded. Did the sand, did the rust. It's been full. Oh, oh God! Mm. Yikes! Did I win anything ever? Oh, no. Yes. Oh, uh, I'll leave you with this. Okay. I know we're um, coming towards time. If that's okay with you, this is a uh, this 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 nearly blew my computer up. Um, my my niece's twelfth uh, birthday. She's very popular in our family disco, but uh, I wanted to do something special for her. And I wanted to include the entire family. So I, I, these are shots of, as you, you know, you're like, they're real people. This is my wife. This is me. Um, this is my father-in-law, mother-in-law, and so on and so forth. And this, this couple over here are this girl's daughter. And this boy over here is his and hers. So we got it. So I wanted to create something different. And I wanted to create a, a cartoon. So basically, these are... you real people as you know imagine but they're cut out and basically i painted i made a selection of them okay and i painted repainted their their clothes their face and the room everything i literally i spent about a week about, it's been about nine days uh, continuously at this and sometimes my computer would just pop and uh, would just give up the goal it would just switch off my switcher on, I lost all the information. But uh, I managed to then, as I was going along, to save it on an external hard drive and then continue working on it and then plug in the hard drive again and start loading it onto it. And you know the fan in the computer? It was going 90. Now, it's a pretty good computer, by the way, Asus. But uh, it was going crazy trying to handle the, the colors in it. And... That dog, uh, it's clearly see he's real. Um, that's Maud, that's her dog. But he, he's passed away and died, so I left him as real in it. But uh, it's, it's just an example of, you know, things you could do, Jordan, um, when you're not getting out and about and you're locked up and, you know, what to do. Just just create something. Do something different. Get out of your comfort zone. And if, it, if it, as uh, you said last night, you know, fail and fail again and then get up. And try and do it better, but fail better the next time. It's a bit like that George who threw my photograph on the ground. <laughs> you know, you can't be disheartened. I mean, I made a mistake. I genuinely made a mistake. And if your photograph gets, you know, thrown out. And, um, mind you, it's only ever happened once in our camera club, in our history of our camera club. So I'm the second person. So as one lad turned around and said, you should be proud of yourself, Pat, for getting your, your photograph disqualified. <laughs> so... I'm going to love you and leave us, if that's okay. And I'll stop sharing. Well, well, well done, Pet. Well done. You're very welcome. You're, you're very welcome. You're, 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 you're hilarious as well. Uh, <laughs> by, by, by the way, 
you kept the audience in front of their screens, but uh, I saw no one eating. They were drinking coffee or tea, and there is someone <laughs> with a wine glass. So, uh, <laughs> Thanks very much. But, um, having one of our members giving us a talk is always a pleasure, and uh, having you as a no, foreigner is, is, is an honor, um, Pet. So uh, I, I look nice. forward. I look forward, Pet, for a collaboration with, with the Dublin Camera Club mm -hmm. because you're a member and uh, I wish that in, in the future we can do some sort of online competition maybe or or, mm -hmm. or and you can be the connecting person between us and, and your club. I, I, I look forward I look forward for that. So we'll keep in touch. <laughs> Thanks very much Stephen. Listen, I'm I'm glad that when I switched off I was still there. I thought you should all just run off. <laughs> cheers mate cheers any questions for Patrick good nothing <laughs> cheers, cheers good thanks um, lads be good thank you Patrick you're very welcome thank you very much we saw the artistic side of you this time <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that now um, well done. Uh, really impressive work and uh, great ideas as well. And also some food for thought for those maybe to do something while they are uh, indoors. I mean, you gave us a lot of uh, uh, creative ideas for what to do, even with flowers. And as you rightly said, and as Stephen quoted yesterday as well, uh, very well, uh, fail uh, and fail again and then mm -hmm. fail better. That's, that's it. Trick, I think that's the trick because that's it. You, you, through, through mistakes, you would learn and you would upskill your work, and obviously, do not repeat the same mistakes that you did or do them differently. So, that's it. That's it. It's, it's just to improve on, you know, yeah. like, you know, yeah. somebody points something now, don't do it the next time, improve, improve, improve. So, and hopefully, you know, someday I'll be good at it. Yes, yes, yeah, obviously, you are good. I mean, <laughs> you can only get better um, to training. But thank you for sharing your work with us. Uh, Steve, yes. Next week, we will be having Sam Shikluna. Yeah, right? he's going to speak. Um, um, he's going to give us a talk about why I shoot landscapes. It will be very interesting. Those who know Sam, you know, he's a prolific local artist and uh, he excels well with his work. So, Join us um, uh, at uh, six, Viz. Uh, you open uh, the floor at uh, 15 minutes before, so we'll have a chat. Um, very interesting. I mean, yeah. Sam is an expert on landscapes and, yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm sure he's going to show us a lot of his works, even from um, his travels. If he went to Iceland, he went to many places, he went to the Dolomite, Dolom I, I think. Yeah, that's. yeah. So the, I'm sure it will be very interesting as usual. We try, I mean, we try to bring artists and uh, I think we can also convey that we, we will have more artists coming up after them and other two at least interesting webinars that really, I mean, you cannot miss them because um, uh, they're really interesting. We try to bring artists, different artists, <laughs> share with you um, things that you can take away uh, really obviously we always seek photographic value so guys thank you i think that thank I'm, you thank you yeah thank, thank you, you Mr. Well done. for joining again a lovely crowd today thank you very much and as we always tell you we hope to see you next week and till then keep safe guys